So I saw that a new expo called New Game Plus 2020 had a showcase of Japanese games coming out. And I originally was going to make a quick one-off Twitter post about it on my Twitter at ZeroNVN, but I had enough to talk about it that I thought it'd be fun instead to make a quick highlight video, so here we are. My Saturday video as usual is still going to come out, so don't worry about that. I'm going to relax a bit on putting myself up on the screen since this is meant to be a quick video, but regardless, I hope you enjoy hearing my casual thoughts, and maybe a viewpoint from someone who's going to be a bit more familiar with everything coming out on this list, than the average viewer, since exceedingly Japanese games tend to be what I'm into. You know, stuff like rants, visual novels, all this stuff I actually do play, and do videos on. Only one way to find out though, so here we go. And we seem to be starting out with Catherine, probably the full body remake I have to imagine. If this is an announcement that's coming out on Steam, I'm gonna be so happy. It was a pretty interesting puzzle platformer kind of game. And it also had some visual novel elements with like making choices, trying to find multiple endings. Kind of a surreal game, very weird, very Japanese, but it's incredibly fun and it's also by Atlas. And looks like this is a Switch release. Ah, darn. If it was Steam, I'd definitely play it. On Switch, eh. Ah yes, we have Suda51 starring this thing, yet the background is entirely this old No More Heroes footage. Let's start! The most awkward of finger guns. <laughs> oh wow. A two minute a two second teaser? Dude, that that's a low blow, man. We still have no idea what your new game's about yet. Oh my god, Harvest Moon. That is a series I used to love, but ever since Friends of Mineral Town, it hasn't quite been the same series. Their newest entries have honestly looked like glorified mobile ports, so I hope this one is better, but even then I'm probably not gonna play it, it's just not for me anymore. Now if Rune Factory 5 was announced, I would totally play that. Is that an armadillo? What is this? Tin and Kuno, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, not interested, but it looks like a cute platformer. Bandai Namco friends, here we go! Well, this isn't what I expected. Oh my lord, it's another Monopoly Fortune Street style kind of game. Unfortunately, even if I had a gun to my head, I probably couldn't find enough friends who'd be down to play this with me. And this trailer is long. How is this trailer longer than Catherine Full Body? Billion Road. Okay, seems kind of a generic name, but sure. You know, it's kind of sad that I see this crab fighting game and I immediately recognize it as Fight Crab. It's obviously a Japanese doujin product if the flailing arms and surreal imagery with a Japanese theme song wasn't enough to make this immediately obvious. If you see hashtag playsum, that's like the poster child for weird Japanese doujin games that actually make it international. Oh, uh, I mean, looks fine. I'm not I'm not going to play it myself. It It is exactly what you think it is. Hey, Samurai Showdown. That game's already out, so this must be something else, right? Like a DLC. For Honor? What? Okay, I mean, sure, whatever. Why not? I honestly haven't really played much of the new Samurai Showdown, but hey, more DLC characters never a bad thing. Oh, is that my boy Subaru? This must be a ReZero Isekai Hajimaru visual novel, I bet. It's actually pretty normal for these animes to usually get like a original visual novel story later, so I'm not surprised something like this came out. I mean, I know ReZero, the new season's coming out, so people are probably really excited for it. I'm only personally partially familiar with this story. I've read a little bit of the light novel, so this isn't that much of interest to me. Although I will say, I have played visual novels of anime before watching their anime, like Code Geass Lost Colors on the PSP, so it wouldn't be the first time. Oh, this is um Fallen Legions. I've actually played the original one, uh, Fallen Legions Sins of the Empire, I believe it's called. It's kind of like a Valkyrie profile battle system, Combined with art that reminds me of a discount version of Vanillaware. Vanillaware makes absolutely gorgeous games like Odin Spear. This under their hand is like a worse version of that, in my opinion. Uh, would I still play this Fallen Kingdom sequel, I'm guessing? Eh. I mean, maybe on my off time, sure. Maybe I'll do it. SNK. Ah, SNK. This must be another collection pack. Hey, wow, look, I'm right. What a surprise. I've actually played this King of Fighters Game Boy Color game before. Uh, anyways, whatever. I mean, it, it's what it is. It's a collection. Moving on. 
I recognize those four color squares anywhere. This has to be Falcom. And this must be Code Steel 4. Nailed it. Although I'm pretty shocked they're announcing it so quick. I mean, Trails of Code Steel 3 just came out on PC it, in the past, like, few months. I, I'm sure you already know, I talked about it all the time, but... Code Steel, like, Trails of Code Steel is actually probably one of the best goddamn modern JRPG series out right now. Not even a question. I think, like, if you were trying to judge JRPG series, Code Steel is way up there. Coming out of all other platforms in 2021, ah, darn, I mean, I'm waiting for the Steam release personally, but hey, at least I get more time to play through Code Steel 3, I suppose. Ah, anime girls, this must be what I'm familiar with. Jokes aside, I have no idea what this is. This is definitely one of the most RPGs I've seen in a while, though. With Corpse Party scenario writer Makoto Kadoi. Oh, the story from Corpse Party writer? Interesting. It's probably pretty messed up then, I imagine. Oh god, what is this idol raising indie game? This is the most indie game I've seen so far this entire list. And I say that knowing they're competing against an armadillo and fight crab. But the venue seems kind of sketchy. That lighting rig Also, this English voice acting, not that great. Managing an idol group where you kind of get into relationships with them. What does that remind me of? I think it starts with an I, ends in Masters, Idol Masters. I wonder if this was inspired by them. Nah. Looks bad, not my style. Another Danganronpa game, but that series is I'm pretty sure it's over with that last of the trilogy. So is this a remastered version of the trilogy? It's a remaster, right? Probably a remaster? Give it to me, I know this is a remaster. Alright, well, since there seems to be a live action segment, I'm gonna wait for them to reveal that it's a remaster. So, Danganronpa, you know, it's that adventure game visual novel thing that's a death game between high school kids. I'm sure you've already heard a lot about it from other people, so I won't go too much into detail. If this isn't a remaster, color me surprised, because after showing, like, the entire trilogy, it's always gonna be like, we remastered this in HD. Oh, it's a phone port. Ah, close enough. Ah, Otome, our favorite Otome visual novel publisher, as I'm pretty sure every single Otome game goes through them nowadays. Uh, Otome games are basically like Gao Gays, except directed towards women. Sure, looks fine. If anyone wants me to cover Otome games, I'm down. I have nothing against them personally. I've actually played one or two before. This Cafe Enchante, if anyone wants me to play it, I'll give it a shot. See, you might ask yourself, why would a guy play an Otome game? But you have to think of it this way. You're not looking necessarily for a guy to be with. You're looking for a guy that you want to be with this main character who's a girl. And when you think of it that way, I can, you know, I can appreciate the story still. Escape from Ashura and... Wow, that trailer was short. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, is that Egovania? That must mean this is, what, another Bloodstained DLC? Wait, he's talking about Curse of the Moon? This is a Curse of the Moon sequel, isn't it? I actually really enjoyed the 8-bit platformer Curse of the Moon more than the actual game itself, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, so... If there's a sequel, yeah, I'll play it. And I kind of dig this overly deep voice like this is a 90s commercial. Also, Corgi in a mech suit is probably the most Japanese thing I've seen yet. Guilty Gear Strive. I love fighting games, but I actually haven't been able to get into one for quite a long time. Ever since, like, Blast Blue was probably my last one, where I actually tried to, like, practice combos and get good at it. My arcade stick has been collecting dust for the past several years. Music is definitely ridiculously good from what I've seen this entry so far, so at the very least, I'll pick up the OST when the Strive comes out. Whether I'm gonna play it, eh, we'll see. Yeah, that's a fairy tale. I recognize Natsu anywhere. I'm gonna be honest. I found nearly every anime game from Namco Bandai to usually not be that great. I, I mean like, not a game that has anime aesthetic, but a game that's based off an anime. I don't know, I just don't really enjoy most of them. I thought Jump Force was a terrible fighting game, but... I enjoy like, when they publish games that are anime games, like Hack GU is not bad. Uh, Tail series is great, I like those ones. Huh, Koei Tecmo and Gust? So like, the Atelier series? So is this an RPG? Hey look, another collection by SMK. Look, I really want to say it's not a collection, but SNK, that's all they've released recently. Old Sam Show, alright. Uh, these are old games. I mean, I don't think there's much for me to say about them. If you grew up on these old fighting games, power to you. 
I, I did too, honestly, but I don't have any drive to want to play them again. That's just me, though. Oh, Idea Factory. Known in Japan by their other favorite title, Idea F I see we got another Otome game coming. Hey, honestly, look, if it's a really good story, I'll check it out. But since it's an Otome game, it's gotta be a really good story for me to want to play it. And this opening tells me nothing except the fact that it exists. Uh, Neptunia, another Neptunia entry. I had a friend who tried their damnedest to convince me that Neptunia was one of the most amazing franchises he has ever played in his entire life. After buying and playing a couple, not for me. It's okay. It's a huge franchise that spans tons of different genres. I'm sure for the Neptunia fans that are out there, you know, they're like, they see this and they're like, yes, more Neptunia. I see this and I'm like, man, I can't wait to go back to playing Cold Steel 3. Oh my god, what is this? I thought that last, like, indie idol game was bad, but... My eyes, this is, this is bad. Whatever this is, if this is a good game, it has a lot to prove, that's all I'm saying. Pretty Princess Party. Yo, that is a name where it's made from, like, a guy who's, like, 70 and is trying to think of... What's a name for a game that's directed towards girls? Ah, oh, I know. Pretty Princess Party. My check's in the mail, I'm done. Oh, Shinren the Wanderer. Been a long time since I've seen you in a game. Shinren the Wanderer is a roguelike mystery dungeon kind of game. Probably the original OG mystery dungeon series, if you will. That said, I'm pretty sure Tower of Fortune and Dice of Fate has been on DS for at least 10 years now. Eh, I mean, even if it's a port, if it's on Steam, at least people are going to play it, and it has an English version, so that's new too. I know Shinren the Wanderer has been kind of famous for being Japanese only a lot of time. Ah, seems like they're speedrunning, so I guess I'll try to speedrun the next few as well. Alright, Shantae, a revival of a really old platformer series. If you enjoyed the last one, you'll probably enjoy this one too, it's probably great. Trails of Cold Steel 3, you've seen what I said about Cold Steel 4. If you want to play a JRPG series that's modern, Play that series. It's got great combat mechanics, giant robots, and great character interactions. Void Terrarium, an indie mystery dungeon game. Whatever that spray thing is in the bottom left, it's kinda cute. Giraffe and Annika. You gotta impress me more than that with whatever you're showing here, because this shows me nothing. I have no idea what this game's about. Volta DX, no comment. Oh, 13 Senato Aegis Rim. This is actually a game I'm looking forward to. I talk about Vanillaware being really beautiful. This is the newest project for Vanillaware since it's been like four years since I last, and I have no time to talk about it. RPG Maker MV. It's been out in Japan for a while, but sure, great. Maybe you'll see a lot more English developers try their hand at the whole RPG Maker genre. Pretty. Two great platformers that have been ported finally after what, like 14 years or something? Challenging, tough, and fun, but retains the disguise of humor. Great. Robotic Notes Dual Pack. Wow, this is coming out in English? I guess I have an even easier excuse to play it sometime. The last part of the science fiction adventure trilogy with Chaos Head, Science Gate, and this Robotic Notes. Okay, I already ran out of time. Um, what's this? Some rat game. Looks like a rhythm game. Looks colorful. Cool. Tasomachi. Tells me nothing. Bright Memory. This is a very generic looking shooter, I must say. Okay, that, no? And that, and that's all of them. Oh wait, no, we have one more announcement? I wonder what's gonna be. Newest entry in a beloved legacy. Oh, Falcom? Newest entry? There's gonna be YS9 then. If it's Falcom, it's gonna be YS, I bet. Or Yis. Yep, that's my boy Edo. I recognize that red hair anywhere. Damn. Falcom is killing it this announcement expo. Chose a Coast Steel 4 and Yis9? That's like both of their best damn series. Yes, for those who don't know, is another exceedingly long-running hack and slash by Falcom that's been going on since way back in the old Nintendo days. Call me impressed. And that's about it. Overall, some interesting series on this list. I expected I knew pretty much everything that was going to come out on some level. And outside of like the weird indie games and that Corpse Party written one, uh, I think I knew most of them. The Otome game ones... They just look kind of generic, I'm gonna be honest, but hey, maybe they're good. I was still definitely excited to hear about Trails of Cold Steel 4, Yes 9, 13 Senato Aegis Rim, Curse of the Moon 2. I know this isn't quite what most of you are used to coming from me, but I had some fun comments to make that I thought would be a nice, quick change of pace. A new video will still be coming out on Saturday that's still the usual format that I'm working really hard on. But as I said in the Z Memories closing statement video, I want to try my hand at some new stuff. So yeah, tell me down in the comments if there are any games you are looking forward to from this list. 
And if you enjoy seeing this more kind of casual reaction to something video coming from me, like button is there as always if you want to tell me that way instead, subscribe if you want to support me, hit the notification all button if you want to catch up with more of the scripted, highly edited content I normally do on Japanese games. Normally, I try to do something interesting at the end of these videos, but I don't have anything planned this time, so here's some videos I've done before, you know, see if you might be interested in them. And with that, I'll see you next time.